Hi, this is Johannes with Glassbox. In this video, I'd like to take you on a quick tour through all the steps required to set up Simulcam. So we'll be taking the input from a physical camera and create a real-time composite with our virtual environment here in Unreal 5. Doing this with Dragonfly is super quick. If you are unfamiliar with the basics of Dragonfly though, uh, watch our getting started tutorial first. So before we get started, it's assumed that you have set up a green screen and a camera that's connected through an SDI cable to an industry standard input like a Blackmagic or Azure capture card. And you also want to track the motion of your camera to mirror its movement on the virtual camera. For this video, I've simply attached my iPad to the camera to use a kit tracking from the Dragonfly companion app. If you're actually using Simulcam, you will of course want to use a tracking method that's more reliable, like a Vive tracker or even optical tracking. You can connect any kind of tracking input here in the Dragonfly setup panel. Compositing in Unreal is typically done through Composure, but setting that up can be quite a bit of work. Uh, Dragonfly simplifies the process through automating the setup and allows you to correct for things like a lens distortion as well. To get this started, all we need to do is to go to the Dragonfly setup panel and set our camera mode from the default virtual camera to Simulcam. Having done this, Dragonfly will now go through and test all possible setups and automatically select the correct one. At this point, the most important thing is that you just wait while Dragonfly is setting our media played, our comp layers, as well as timecode and sync. This will take around 30 seconds and you can already see that it's happening here. We just saw our camera image flash in and if you look at the hut, you can see the setup indicators blinking as Dragonfly is figuring out the correct setup. We'll know that this is done when all the indicators in the hut have turned green and our media plate stays visible in the Dragonfly viewport. Next, let's set up our keying. In Simulcam mode, Dragonfly has a dedicated panel for this called Simulcam. So let's add a keying color and then pick this green screen color from the media plate. And you can see in the Dragonfly viewport how we now have a live two plate comp of our virtual set extension with our camera plate. If we want, we can add a second keying color. We can add spill and play around with all these settings to get the keying that we're looking for. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, so I'm not gonna fine tune this right now, but I think you get the idea. Next, I'm panning our camera here, and you can see that the movement of the object in the camera plate and our virtual background doesn't match. Let's fix this by matching the settings of our virtual camera to our physical camera. I'm using a zoom lens that's set to 70 millimeters here, so that's what I'm selecting for my Dragonfly lens as well. You can see that our plates are starting to match better now, but we still need to match the camera's sensor size and engine. To do that, we can create a new Dragonfly camera preset. Dragonfly comes with this folder structure here by default. So I'll go into the camera profiles folder, right click and create a new Dragonfly camera profile asset. Double clicking it opens the asset editor or I can also select it as the active camera profile in operator main and then click edit selected camera profile, which opens the same asset editor. So I happen to know that my camera has a sensor size of 35.6 by 23.8 millimeters and I'm using a full HD output resolution, so an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. I can also select which color space my camera plate uses, so Dragonfly can match its colors to the color space of the virtual background. And don't forget to save the changes to the camera profile. Now let's do our obligatory camera pan again, and you can see that the two plates now match pretty closely. This might already be sufficient for a quick test or some rough on-set visualization. One thing that we haven't done yet is correcting for lens distortion. To get lens distortion, you will usually do some form of lens calibration, which happens outside of Rankfly, so I'm not covering that here. But whatever your process is, you will typically end up with either an ST map or distortion coefficients. Dragonfly will accept either one. If it's an ST map, just drag it in here and it will be applied. If it's coefficients, we can also just enter them here. For this showcase, I'm just eyeballing some distortion. Keep in mind that I'm just using AR kit for my tracking here, which is responsible for some of those little glitches that you can see. You also need to add some overscan. Your overscan should always be the smallest value that still results in the green border around the image being completely covered. And if you're using an anamorphic lens, you also want to set the lens type of the Dragonfly lens to anamorphic and enter your lens's squeeze factor. In my case, this is not an anamorphic lens, so I'll just leave it at spherical and make sure to save. 
And there you have it. That's our Dragonfly virtual camera matching our physical camera. If all you're looking for is simulcam with a live camera plate and a virtual set extension, we're done at this point. Feel free to end the video here. Sometimes though, you also want there to be some virtual elements in the foreground. So let's do a bonus round and find an object that we might want to see in the foreground plate. There are of course multiple ways for how to move the Dragonfly camera inside the scene. I'm using a little trick here where I'm placing an actor and then platforming the Dragonfly camera to that actor, which allows me to move and rotate it simply by transforming the actor. Let's say we want to have that pine branch there in the foreground. So let's take a look at the Composure sec. You can see that in the initial setup, Dragonfly has already created a foreground plate for us, just in case we might want to use it. To have our pine branch rendered as part of that foreground plate, we can open the layers panel. And here again, there's already a foreground layer waiting for us. So to bring our pine branch into the foreground, all we have to do is select it and drag it into this foreground layer. And just like that, our pine tree is now in front of our camera plate. By the way, note that in the same way, there's also a holdout setup here, which we could use for a garbage mat if our physical green screen does not cover our entire background. And then to get the tree into the background again, we simply display the contents of that layer. There's our tree, select it and hit delete. And it's back to the background. So yeah, I hope this will simplify your simulcam process in Unreal Engine. You can always jump in and out of simulcam mode seamlessly from Dragonfly's setup panel. If you have any questions, get in touch with us at glassboxtech.com.